If anyone has ever wondered, does the top five Wednesday prompts, do they like grow your TBR pile, Lara, because you make mine grow? The answer is yes. The answer is yes, because today's prompt definitely added like two or three series to my TBR. Hello friends, happy Wednesday. So very excited that you're here. It is another top five Wednesday and I'm super pumped for this prompt today because a huge shout to my Patreon members as well as my channel members. They randomly chose this prompt and if you would like to sign up and be part of where each month you can help choose a prompt, the sign up links are down below. Shout out to all of them. I'm very excited, like I said, for this prompt. But in case if you're not familiar with top five Wednesday, in a nutshell, basically each week I answer a prompt using five books. But in this case, I do manga to reflect the said prompt. And today's prompt, is arranged marriage. I'm really excited for this. Sorry, I know I said it like literally three times now. My apologies. I feel like the arranged marriage trope is maybe like not as popular as it used to be or I'm just not finding it. I don't know. I feel like this prompt definitely required me to do quite a bit of research and I found a few articles and I was like, okay, one of them I had and I'm like, I, well, two of them. One of them I completely forgot. The other one you're gonna be like, oh, yep, yeah, that totally should be here and totally fits. But anyway, I just feel like I have not read a lot of manga that had arranged marriage tropes. And so I actually checked out like two different series from my library. One of them I did read. I'm not going to feature it today. I have briefly talked about it on Instagram as well in a video for Patreon members and channel members. So I will talk more about that series at the end of the month or ne early next month, I mean, for my reading wrap up video. I have a lot of feelings there. I have a lot of feelings there. But anyway, moving on here, talking about the manga I'm going to feature today. I really wanted to do titles that I didn't really see on these lists and that were a little bit more obscure and not like the big popular ones say like happy marriage I think it's question mark explanation point that was one that kept coming up really often but I felt like that was too spicy for me so I did not try it or even see if it was I just sort of got that vibe from some of the covers I had seen I was like I don't know I'm not saying it's bad just didn't want the spice but I guess saying that though for number one this is not obscure and I feel like we're all like well this one should be on the list and I felt the same way and that is my happy marriage. There has been so much hype around this series and it's so exciting because I don't feel like when it first released like it wasn't good or it wasn't getting hype but when the anime came out the hype became very very real. I've seen so many people people that I do know and people that I don't know on social media who are picking it up they're like I watched the anime it was super good absolutely loved it now I want to go read the manga go read the light novels and they're just devouring everything like all the content that they can get with this series, which is absolutely amazing. I know there's an art book and I'm so hoping that Square Enix is going to print that in English. I'm going to wait because I feel like the last two times that I have picked up an art book that was not translated to English, it got translated like a year later. So I'm like, I'm waiting. I'm going to be patient and I'm going to hold off and wait to see if it does. But I really, really love this series. I'm not going to go in depth about it. I do have a review if you're interested in hearing more of my thoughts on it. I read it earlier this year for the shoujo event that I hosted. It was a very very emotional moving roller coaster and I feel like it is a very unique shoujo story that is very heart moving and heart hitting. There are a lot of deeper themes and I'm very excited to see where volume four goes which finally arrived. I've been like waiting for that pre-order to come in the mail. It's finally here. I'm hoping before the month ends that I will read it because I really want to know where it goes because I did not for the anime I did not watch past the content that was considered for volume three because I'm like I don't want any spoilers. I I'd rather read the manga first and then watch the anime because if I watch the anime, then I'm not going to read the manga for a long time. So I don't know why. That's just been my history with manga anime. Anyway, very, very excited to not only read that volume, but also feature this series. It's very beautiful and I would definitely recommend it if you want something nice that has deeper themes and is just very, very emotional. It's not necessarily a happy read. I don't mean that in a bad way by any means because my husband was like, oh, I'm going to check out the anime. I'm like, I really... I really don't think you're gonna like it. And he's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, well tell me what you think it's about. He's like, oh, they get married and they're basically happy. And I said, no, <laughs> I said, no, do not be deceived by the title. But I do believe that the title is gonna be the end game for this couple. At least it better be because I expect nothing less than these two being very, very happy and having a very happy marriage. For number two, I'm so excited for this one. In fact, it literally like within 10 to 15 minutes, I'm preparing to film this video and it just comes to mind. I was like, 
does that have the arranged marriage trope? And I had to go look it up and yes, and this is a long title, I hope I get it right. For number two, I am saying I was reincarnated as the villainous in an Otome game, but all the boys love me. Anyway, I think I got that full title right. I unfortunately do not have this series anymore and I debated about sharing it, but I really, really loved volume one of this series. I do have a review on this channel because I just absolutely loved it. Mystia, the main girl, I deeply related to her. And when I was rereading, I was like, yes, Mystia is such an amazing, phenomenal heroine, and I deeply enjoyed seeing her story unfold in this first volume. I would not recommend the later volumes unless you are okay with basically all the guys going a little bit crazy and having like reverse personalities. I was not a fan of that because I loved Mr. Sparkling Prince and he, the man on the cover, is who her arranged marriage partner is. That is her fiance. I don't remember how long their arranged marriage is. She's pretty young in the beginning of the series, but she, her, their parents arranged it obviously because I had to make sure. I was like, make sure, Laura, you got your facts right. And so I was so excited to see that because her parents were like, hey, Mistia, you need to, you know, get married. You need to have a fiance soon. Something happened happens and the Mr. Sparkling Prince is the candidate and their families were already good friends. And so that's sort of how the story is set up in the like first chapter more or less. There's some really great mystery elements. And again, I love Mystia. She does everything she can to help protect her family, to help keep them safe. And I really re resonate with a few of her choices, even though, you know, definitely not a villainous here or even, you know, like Rikari into an Izakai Otome game or to an Otome game, I mean. But I really loved her and just found her to be a great character. And so I definitely would recommend volume one. I think it's an amazing first volume. Volume two was also pretty good. It's just volume three, the 180s of these male characters. And I'm like, what are you doing to Mr. Sparkling Prince here? But that manga does have the arranged marriage trope. And I'm really excited because even if I didn't continue the series and I have since dropped it, I still very much love volume one. It was one of my favorite reads, not last year, but I think the year before. And it's one again that I would still recommend. For Number three, oh man, this manga is so underrated and that is Blissful Land. I have heard about this manga. It's been on my radar. I remember a few years ago, I saw it. I'm like, oh, that looks really good. And I sort of like low key added it to my TBR, but I didn't do anything. I didn't read it until today's video. Literally this morning after I dropped my kids off, I was like, you know what, Laura, you need to go look it up to see, hey, can you feature this? Do you enjoy it? And thankfully it's on the K Manga app. I think like the first volume is pretty much free. You don't have to buy any tickets or anything. So I read, I believe it was the first three chapters. So good. I was like, this is so wholesome. It's so cute. I'm like, why aren't more people talking about this? I'm like, why didn't I read it sooner? I really, really loved it. It is in like 18th century Tibet. I think it was like 18th century, but it's in Tibet. I do know that. And it centers around this 13 year old boy. He is sort of like a, I'm blanking on the name, herbalist. There we go. He's like a doctor slash herbalist. This girl with her father comes and they're like, oh, his mom's like, oh, they're gonna be staying with us. And he finds out that this girl who's also 13 years old is his fiance. That is his bride and he's getting married the next day. Talk about a total shocker, but she's so cute. And what I really love from what I have read so far is that they have two different passions, but like they encourage each other to pursue that passion. For example, one of the things is she's never met her future husband, but she was drawn to him based off the things she had heard of how caring he is for the people in this village, of how he's doing everything he can to help them. And even that day that she arrives, he spends almost like the entire, like the whole night making this medicine to help one of the villagers because he's like, I just want to help keep everybody smiling by doing what I can as a doctor. And I guess he would be like the future official doctor of the village. I don't know if there's like another older doctor in the meantime, but he does provide herbs and medicine for those people. And so she's seeing this and she's seeing that the rumors that she's heard are true. And that is actually what drew her to start having feelings for him before she even met him. And then later on, they actually have like a meeting where they go off and they go to get some herbs with his younger sister. He finds out like what one of her passions are. And she was nervous though to talk about it, even though what she does is very beautiful. I won't say it is because spoilers, but it does affect her hands. And she's like, I was sort of embarrassed that, you know, you might be sort of like ashamed of it or like, 
why your hands like that? And he's like, well, why would I have a problem with that if that's something you love doing? And I was like, mm, my heart has been captivated by this story, by these two little precious little beans. I very much want to keep reading the series again. I saw in K-Manga that basically the first volume is free. I think it's a five volume series. I do know it's on other digital platforms as well. And the artwork is simply amazing. It definitely made me think of A Bride Story, which I have not personally read, but I think if you like that series, because that also has an arranged marriage trope, I think you would like this one. The attention to details in the artwork is absolutely breathtaking. That was definitely a winner for me and one that I've added to my TBR that I want to finish reading because I'm like, I've got to see these two precious beings have a happy ending because they just seem like they're going to have a happy story and I'm here for it and I want to see it. For number four, I talked about this manga at the beginning of the month of how it was on my TBR goals and I did read it and that is Nay Nay Nay. I had make sure I said all three nays. This is by the same, the artist, for the art, this is by the same artist that does Horimiya. This was really cute. It is definitely a wholesome age gap story and it does not fit any of the claims that all age gap manga are very problematic. No, this story is so precious. I mean, it was super cute. I don't know what else to say about it. I Even when I wrote my written review on Goodreads, I'm like, this is just cute. This is wholesome. I enjoyed it. It's not a new favorite for me, but it's one I'm definitely glad Glad to finally have in my collection because I can definitely see myself coming back rereading this again when I just want something to lift my heart because these two I think what does it say awkwardly ever after they're so awkward around each other and yes they do have like a I think it's 20 year 20 year age gap but it was never like uncomfortable he always has a mask on and I really loved the world building like so much there's a baby dragon he's so precious I wish we had more of him and I wish we could have had actually this as a series because it ends on a good note. But I'm like, I want more. I mean, it was a satisfying one shot and I would definitely recommend it. I mean, as I've seen it everywhere and I feel like maybe that's true for a lot of us. Like we've seen it, but we've never actually read it. <laughs> At least that was very true for me. So I'm really glad that this prompt was chosen and that I was able to read it finally because I said I'm going to come back to it. The artwork is definitely very, very pretty and I just could not get over their awkward shenanigans because <laughs> more often than not, they really are they're just oh oh here he is right here look at the cute little dragon i so wish we had more of him because he was a precious little bean and there was even colored pages right here in the middle which i was like oh we have colored pages so that was really really cool and i just have very beautiful artwork a very fun and sweet story so if you're just looking for something where these two people come together age does not matter i mean it definitely influences different things that happen in the story but seeing them grow together as a couple was deeply satisfying and very very sweet and i look forward to coming back and rereading this at some point. For number five, I'm going to change it up. I literally just pulled this off my bookshelf and that is Haru's Curse. I was debating about featuring this one or not. It's not a light fluffy story, but it is absolutely amazing. The arranged marriage trope is not very, it definitely influences the story, but I feel like in the sense of how I featured the other ones where we're actually focused on the couple that's in the arranged marriage, we don't necessarily have this or in this story because her sister was engaged to this man. They were in an arranged marriage, but something, I don't remember what kind of sickness she has, but she ends up dying in the hospital. This is going to sound really weird, but, but, but I can assure you that this is such a good story. She tells him or asks him, will you date me and take me to all the places that you took my sister so she can, I think, more or less keep her sister's memory alive? He agrees, but the thing is, is he starts having feelings for her as the story goes on, and sure enough, she also also has feelings for him. And Harvard's Curse is a really fitting title for this. I mean, it's a one shot, but it's two volumes in Japan then just as a one omnibus in English. It is very fitting for how the series or how the story unfolds. It does have, I feel like, a happy ending, but it's an emotional journey to get there. And when you hear that premise of what I shared, it's like, Mm, I don't know about this. And even I was really unsure about this. But I actually read this when Mar Marguerite's manga, when she was doing her book club last year, this was one of the series that we read or books that we read. I mean, I talked about it with her on her live stream as well as Bizarre at Bizarre Individual. It was just such a deep, moving, emotional ending or story. But I loved the ending. I felt like when it comes to grieving over a loved one, our main girl here has a moment that I just felt 
just resonated with me as losing my dad at a young age and it taking many years for me to cope with that, that he's never gonna walk through that door and bam, I'll see him again. I really just related to that moment. It was very, very moving. So I would definitely say be in a good mindset if you read this because as the story progresses, oh my goodness, especially like the second half, it is hard hitting. I feel so bad for our main girl because of the things that she's realizing about her sister, what her sister said about her, what her sister said about her fiance is just like, true. like there's a lot of feelings and a lot of emotion and the art is absolutely amazing. I love the art. This is by the same creator of Yakuza Fiance. I I didn't really care for you because the fiance, I'm sorry. I didn't really care for that one, but I really, really enjoyed this story and absolutely love the art. And even if the romance is not your typical romance, I guess you would say I really did love the romance and how it unfolded in this volume or in this series. I In this book, I keep wanting to say series. I would definitely recommend this one as well, especially if you're wanting a deeper, not so fluffy or straightforward kind of arranged marriage story. And how that arranged marriage is going to affect our main girl. It's very, very good. I do not talk about this enough on my channel. I really considered doing a video review, but I just really felt like I did not have the words to accurately convey how good and amazing this story is. So I will definitely leave the link to Mark's live stream here, or if I can't leave it there, I'll leave it down below because I feel like we had a lot of great talking points and I was so thankful to have read that with them and just other people and be able to discuss how great and just thought provoking this story is. For my honorable mention, this technically is not a manga, but I'm actually really, really excited to read this. I read a little bit of this, but right before this video, I feel like everything sounds like last minute, even though I really have been thinking about this video for like two weeks now. I don't know how you say this. This is a man, no, it's not a manhwa, but it's the Royal Palace something. Goong? Is that how you say that? I don't know. I don't know Korean, but apparently this was a very popular series. I don't have all of it. I was going to read all of it before this video, but I didn't realize somebody had volumes two and three checked out from my library. So I have volume one and then up to volume 12. I think it's an 18 volume series, but I am very curious about this because it's sort of like contemporary fantasy, maybe. The premise is, wonder if the monarchy in Korea never ended. Wonder if it continued into modern day where there's princesses, kings, and queens, and there's still the whole palace thing. Because this guy here is the royal prince, and I didn't read it. <laughs> I sort of read from like the middle to the end. I like skim read. So I don't know how she gets chosen. It seems like there was some kind of promise or something between their parents. And so she is going to be the new royal princess. Apparently she is not really up to the role. Like not only does she not want to get married to this guy, but she is not princess material as some of the characters not so kindly tell her. But what really had me curious after I was just like flipping through pages is when his friends friend talks to him and he says, hey, why do you want to marry this girl? Because I, I think he likes another girl. He even proposed to her, but she sees it happen, I guess. I'm like, oh man, that's some, <laughs> that's some drama. But anyway, he tells his friend that he's going to marry this girl because he thinks she's going to basically liven things up in his family and he wants to see how it will un unfold. Now I admit, from what I have read, he's a little bit of a jerk. I didn't appreciate everything he says, but this girl, she stood up for herself and I was like, yeah, I know that's right. Because <laughs> he's like, who would want to marry you anyway, you know, being so ugly. I'm like, oh goodness. So uh, I think he's gonna have some redeeming points. Um, but leave it in that character growth that it's a thing in this series because it does seem it will be that way. And he did have some moments where he did come across very caring and that he was not completely heartless. And so I'm hoping that I can get volumes two and three this week. And then I can read through this series because the art is really interesting. <laughs> like there's moments like this. This is her mom and that's her face smushed up against the car going to talk to her daughter because of the things that are happening. And there are a few other panels like that where they just have the funniest faces. There was another one that like, oh, I think this is it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Look at her face. 
I don't know what happened, but I was like, I felt so bad in their faces too. So there were some really funny moments, it seems as well, mainly due to the art more than it seems the actual story itself. But let me know if anybody's read this. Like I said, it seemed to be popular, but I've never heard of it until now. And I'm hoping since my library doesn't have the last few volumes, if I enjoy this, I hope the last few volumes are not hard to find and they're really cheap to find at that. And that, my friends, wraps up all of my picks for arranged marriages. I hope that you haven't heard of some of these or if you saw some of your favorites, I hope that that was just as exciting as well. I would love to know, do you enjoy the arranged marriage trope? Do you wish we had more trope that were in books or manga today? I would love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Bye!